ladies and gentlemen, you have heard members of the Trumpite crew say that nobody from the Trump regime or no Trump supporter actually committed acts of terrorism on January 6th. This has now become an adopted narrative by those on the right. It used to be the far right, now it's an adopted narrative by those on the right. You have members of Congress even subscribing to this narrative that no, Trump supporters did not actually storm the Capitol, but in fact, Antifa, it was Antifa who did this according to their narrative. Let me remind you of what was said initially, here it is. And the mob that attacked the US Capitol building Wednesday, killing a police officer, appears to have been overwhelmingly composed of supporters of President Trump. But in right-wing online circles, rumors are swirling that the destruction was caused by Antifa, far-left-leaning anti-fascist militant groups who claim to resist neo-Nazis and white supremacists at demonstrations. However, there's no evidence so far that that took place Wednesday. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I actually have some evidence of a fake Antifa member who has been arrested by the FBI, who because of an, uh, an affidavit, we know that this person dressed as if he was actually a member of Antifa. Uh, so there's a man who has been arrested. Uh, this is quite interesting, a Virginia man arrested in connection with the Capitol riots dressed in all black on January 6th so that he would look like an Antifa member according to an FBI affidavit. Uh, now this guy's name, and I hope I'm not slaughtering the name, is Fee Dong. Uh, let's put up a, one of the pictures that we have. Um, he's, one, he's one of more than 520 people charged so far in relation to the riot. Dozens of whom have been linked to far right groups, like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. He has been charged with disorderly conduct, obstruction of an official proceeding, and knowingly entering a restricted building without lawful authority. But here's the other part of this narrative that's very important to understand. This individual who decided to dress like he was a member of Antifa to promote a false narrative reminds me of something. You know what this reminds me of? Let's go back to what has been deemed historically as the Boston Tea Party. Now we all know it was not a party whatsoever. It was actually a riot. Property was destroyed, violence took place, and theft took place. Now because the men who did this act of terrorism, because they were in fact white men, they are listed as patriots in our history books in the United States of America. But they did in fact destroy property. They did in fact challenge and change commerce. They did in fact interrupt the business flow of that day. Now some will say they were justified in doing so and that's a different argument and debate. I'm willing to have that debate any day. But let's be very clear, they dressed as Native Americans during the Boston Tea Party riot in order to do their deeds in order to enact their violence. Well, very similarly, that's what that is what happened here. Now, here's what else took place. He also told an undercover FBI agent that he conducted surveillance efforts on the Capitol a month after the riot took place and was part of a militia group for which the agent attended meetings. Here's why that's important. It doesn't stop with January 6th. So those of you who may say we don't need a January 6th committee or we don't need to investigate this further. Let me tell you why that's a mistake. Those individuals are connected to various groups in this country. They are in fact domestic terrorists. Terrorism is not a moment, it's not an event, it's an ideology. They still hold the ideology of someone who wants to rip the country apart by way of criminality and violence. That still exists, this individual does not exist by himself. He's connected to an organization, to a movement hell bent on destruction of our democracy. To talk more about this, I got my big homie, Benjamin Dixon. Thank you brother for being on Indisputable. Thanks for having me, man, it's always a pleasure. Once again, 
the narrative is completely opposite of what they've been saying. They have been telling us that there are Antifa members or were Antifa members who attacked the US Capitol. But in fact, these were Trump supporters. These were militia supporters who tried to mimic Antifa uh, to carry out their criminal activity. Yeah, and I, I think one of the um, the most important things that we have to remind the people of is that Antifa is not an organization yes. along the lines of Proud Boys. It's not an organization. There's no chapters. There are no. There's no hierarchy. There's no president of Antifa. Um, but it has. It's this ubiquitous boogeyman. It is what Republicans use. This week, because next week it'll be a new boogeyman. Like, you know, it'll eventually be the war on Christmas boogeyman. But Republicans are really adept at using a a centralized figure for everyone to be afraid of. And in this case, it's Antifa. And that gentleman knew that if he dressed up as such, that he would help weave into the national narrative that this wasn't Donald Trump supporters doing this, but this was actually Antifa when we all know better. Don't you find it quite fascinating the level of strategy they are willing to employ, even in the middle of what seems to be chaos. And this is why it's important to pay attention to moves like this, because it talks or highlights a sophistication connected to what they're trying to do. They are perfectly willing to do a criminal act and intentionally blame another party for doing it. Number yeah. one, you're telling me you're not a true believer in what you're doing. Number one, you're not a true believer. Number two, you're a coward. Because you would rather hide behind your sheet de facto, you rather hide behind your hood de facto than to be proud of what you actually believe in. Now, I completely disagree with these guys in methodology and also in policy. But damn, to dress up as someone who's adversarial to your cause, to create a false narrative about who was involved, and you're right, brother. Uh, Antifa is just one of those branding mechanisms utilized by the right in order to clump everybody in to what they want to be the bad person. Mm, mm, exactly right, and this is how they get away with it. They're Republicans, they are they in this conversation. <laughs> um, Republicans have become masters and have been masters of propaganda, half truths, distortions, um, and yellow journalism. And they understand the power of a talking point. They also understand if they just keep saying Antifa long enough, then they will have Republican supporters willing and and who believe in it enough to die for it or to march up the steps of the Capitol pretending to be Antifa in order to vilify something. Watch this, Dr. Richie, that doesn't even exist. Right. Antifa doesn't exist, but this man believed in it so much that he marched up the steps dressed as one. The the biggest criticism, one of the biggest criticisms I have of Democrats is their inability to message mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. They are actually on the right side, progressives, left leaning individuals, even corporate Democrats on occasion are actually on the right side of the historical narrative and the progress narrative. When you look at popularized programs that we have adopted as normative in the United States of America, those are Democrats that came up with those ideas. Those were progressives of that era who pushed that legislation that everybody, Democrats and Republicans benefit from today. And you would be hard pressed to try to rip some of these programs away Mm. from uh, Americans today, but they were in fact progressive policies of that era. So how is it that the majority of, of Americans are with Democrats as it relates to a woman's right to choose? The majority of Democrats, the majority of Americans are with Democrats as it relates to uh, funding or increased funding for K through 12 education. Uh, the majority of Americans are for police reform, criminal justice reform. You can just go down the list, brother. But somehow Republicans have been more successful at branding their message to the American public than Democrats have been. Absolutely, and that's exactly what it is. It's the ability to brand. It's the ability to package it up into a talking point. And I think that is something that they have mastered and something that Democrats sorely need to learn.